Mr. Allen, and I'd like to congratulate all the uh, the Hall of Fame uh, recipients, all the drivers, racers. They're going to be uh, awarded here tonight. Everybody, you did a great job, and we really appreciate all the hard work you put into this. The phrase, nice guys finish last, certainly does not apply to this Hall of Fame inductee. With an ever-present smile, Charlie Cragen was a winner and champion, first on dirt, then on the asphalt speedways of the region, rightfully earning the nickname Charging Charlie. <laughs> Having had a chance to work with Charlie at Jennerstein and Motordrome, and reading over his Hall of Fame bio, it's easy to tell he had his priorities in place with wife Connie, children Casey, Lindsay, and Andrea as his supporters. Although while racing, spending time away from, from his family was always tough. Charlie had a great camaraderie with the racing community who shared his similar interests. Charge and Charlie got into racing because his dad raced and he was able to help with his race car. Charlie began his own driving career in 1975 in the semi-late models on the dirt at Jennerstown. Now the first couple of years were a learning experience for Charlie, moving from the semi-lates to the late models in 1976, but by 19, 1977, now his second season in a late model, his first win came at Clearfield Speedway. From that first win, Charge and Charlie amassed numerous victories and championships, driving for the likes of Jim Cornell, Ray and Roger Scanlon, Andy Kaza, the Biter Brothers, Barry Hohenstein, and Dave Martinelli. Mm -hmm. Becoming a two-track champion on the dirt at Clearfield and Motordrome in 1978, Charlie won Jennerstown Speedway's dirt title in 1983. He won three NASCAR championships in 1992, 93, and 94 at Motordrome on the asphalt and back-to-back -back NASCAR championships at Jennerstown in 93 and 94, making Charlie a two-track champion again this time on the asphalt in 93 and 94. On pavement alone, Charlie Cragen won 53 times at Motordrome and 37 times at Jennerstown, 90 races total from the time those tracks were paved. While the championships at Jennerstown and, and Motordrome, with the championships at Jennerstown and Motordrome, Charlie Cragen won the prestigious NASCAR, Re, NASCAR Winston Racing Series Northeast Regional Championship in 1992, 93, and 94, catapulting him into the national spotlight. Area Auto Racing News recognizes division leaders throughout the racing seasons, and on two occasions, Charlie won the Area Auto Racing News Award for most late model wins in, in a season with 23 in 1992 and 25 in 1995. Okay. Charlie also won three consecutive Cavalcade Point Championships in 1992, 93, and 94, an award presented by our own Walt Weimer. During Charge and Charlie's dirt track racing days, he competed against some of his favorite competitors like Pittsburgh Circle Track Club Hall of Famers Gary Martz and his teammate Turk Burkett while driving a March chassis. While on the asphalt tracks at Jennerstown and Motordrome, Charlie competed against some of his toughest and most respected competitors like Pittsburgh Circle Track Club Hall of Famers Steve Pellis and Glenn Galt, and I'm here to tell you those were legendary battles. Speaking of legendary, Charge and Charlie's most memorable race win came in 1979 while competing on the dirt at Motordrome against, without a doubt, the toughest dirt late model drivers in the country, the NDRA, lapping them not once, but twice in one race. Rounding out Charge and Charlie's glorious career was a two race or a nine race run in the NASCAR Camping World, then the Craftsman Truck Series with a startup team owned by the Biter Brothers, Scanlons, Andy Kaza with a best finish of 14th at Homestead after starting 20, 28th. Quite a career. Tonight I'm privileged to introduce to you our newest Pittsburgh Choker Circle Track Club Hall of Fame member, Charging Charlie Craig. Congratulations, Charlie, and what a career it was. So, you know, from the dirt to the asphalt, you were a winner all the way around. Uh, you went to great heights with the NASCAR championships and even on into the truck series at NASCAR. Yeah, thanks a lot. It was, uh, I, could, I could say it was a lot of fun and let them, met a lot of nice people over, over the years. And, uh, 
Now, how hard was it for you going from the from the dirt to the asphalt tracks? Because I know when Jennerstown was paved, when Motordrome was paved, you guys really had to take dirt late models, put them on the asphalt, and I know for some guys it wasn't easy. No, I thought that was going to be easy, but uh, I got an education there, <laughs> and uh, it's a lot harder than it looks. But uh, I, I really like the uh, dirt, and then I like the asphalt too. I I wouldn't say which I like better, but uh, it's all racing, you know. Now, going back to the, the night that you you won the NDRA race at Motordrome, I know you and I talked about this, and, and actually, that night, I came down into Victory Lane and asked you, you were standing there holding the trophy, you're all dirty and dusty. The racetrack was awful dusty. You barely could even see the race cars. And I said to you, how did you know where that wall was when you were coming out of the fourth turn? And you said to me, all I could hear was the exhaust bouncing off the wall. Yeah. Yeah, it was really dusty that night, and uh, he, at times you couldn't see at all. I could see, most of the time I could see other cars and everything, but uh, I got against the wall a few times where I really couldn't see it, but our pipes came out the right door, and I could hear the exhaust right against the wall a time or two. That saved me for <laughs> running into it. And that had to be, feel really good to, to not only lap that, that caliber of drivers, I mean, that was a phenomenal feel. Guys came from all over the country at basically one of your home tracks, you lap them twice, not just once, but twice, that group of drivers. Yeah, that felt really good. And I, I, one of my favorite guys that worked on the car, Rick, he's here with me tonight. He, he was, uh, we talked that night, he talked to some of those fellows and they was kind of telling us what we needed to do and if we wanted to have a chance, you know. But we ran what we normally ran and all we did was add a little bit of spoiler to it. And they had the track, they had control of the track, they made it real dry that night, so I had trouble qualifying, but I got in, and uh, they made, right before the race, they watered the track on the outside just a little bit, so, and that left the moisture come up, and that was my groove, and it worked out pretty good. <laughs> well, as we did in Victory Lane so many times, who do you want to thank? Oh, I thank the Pittsburgh Circle Track Club for uh, all this, and uh, congratulate all the other inductees and uh, thank my wife and uh, <laughs> car owners. Uh, uh, I didn't have a gun up here, trust me. Uh, by the way, we got married in November too, you know. <laughs> Congratulations. And uh, uh, Rick and Joyce Thurman, Rick helped me all these years. And uh, the car owners over the years, Jim Cornell and Scanlons and uh, Biter Brothers and everybody that you named there, Dave Martinelli, I, uh, you know, they gave me good equipment to race and that's what you really need that. Uh, you can't do it all alone, you know. Without. Well, it was a lot of fun watching you driving the race cars over the year, not only the dirt at the asphalt tracks and working with you, the chances that I had at Jennerstown and Motodrome. Congratulations on your inductee of the Hall of Fame. Okay, thanks a lot.